Relationship Advice My, 37 male, wife, 37 female, has decided she's going to transition to be male, and is trying to convince me to stay? We've been together 12 years, married three and a half. Last year during lockdown, she told me she thinks she should have been born male, and thinks she's trans. I mean, obviously I'm gutted, but as she wasn't sure, we were going to work on it, do therapy slash counseling etc. It's been a bit hit and miss. It's gone downhill a bit, because she's a lot more masculine in how she dresses and presents, and I'm not really that attracted to her anymore. In fact, we haven't had intimacy in ages. Since Elliot Page came out, she's gone into overdrive. But at the start of the week, we were really down and depressed together. And she admitted she realizes she definitely is a man and wants to identify as a male. To the extent she wants to start hormones and have surgery one day. I'm straight. I like women, and the thought of having intercourse with men repulses me. So, I said I think I may have to bail. But she's trying to convince me to work on it, carry on with therapy and counseling. Nothing is ever a good enough excuse. I say I'm not gay, her attitude is, don't love the gender, love the person. I say intimacy is important, and don't want to sleep with a man? She says we can have a platonic relationship and a boyfriend and girlfriends, and still be together. She's trying to get me to make an urgent meeting with my therapist to talk it out. What's to talk out? I'm not gay. Not gonna lie, I feel so awful and betrayed. I've been trying to support her, yet feel like I have nothing for myself. And as much as I ain't gay, I do love her. I know technically she's going to be a he soon, but to me, she's my wife and life partner and I feel guilty. Do I just go, nah bro, divorce please? Or do I go to therapy or work on it? Now for the top advice. You don't owe your wife slash him anything, honestly. They are no longer the person you married, and you both deserve a fulfilling marriage, in all ways. You can support your spouse, but you don't have to stay married to them to do so. Well put, you are a smart fellow or lady. Exactly. She's probably scared of losing him as an anchor given this is a massive transition. OP, be supportive and assure her you'll still remain platonic friends. You just don't need to be married. She can't have her cake and eat it too. If you're both dating while married, what does that mean for the people you date? Or when one of you wants to move on first? It's better to be platonic already, and stay friends through all these changes. You still love her, and she's right it will likely become platonic love. She doesn't realize that's a given since you're not physically attracted to men. OP brought up Elliot Page. I wonder if he's aware that Elliot had to divorce his wife because his wife is a lesbian. It's hard. But all the therapy in the world cannot make OP gay. I went through the exact same thing with my ex with the genders reversed. I'm a woman, my ex is MTF. We had been together for 11 years when she announced that she was a woman. I was in the exact same boat as you, not gay, not remotely interested in having a physical or romantic relationship with a woman. We tried an open relationship and frankly, it was a disaster for us. We went to couples counseling. We even sought a non-binary counselor who specialized in these issues and open relationships. It was an absolute mess. I can't tell you how many times I was called a turf, phobic. We ultimately split up. We are both in relationships with other people right now, and we are both really happy. We have a child together. I have primary custody but our co-parenting relationship has been very harmonious so far. I consider my ex a friend. And I'm extremely grateful that we are on the same page on all the big issues as far as raising our child. I'm completely supportive of her transition, and I'm thrilled that she's in a new relationship and they are really happy together. Her girlfriend has met her daughter and they seem to love each other, which is great. Feel free to PM me, since I understand exactly what you're going through, and not a lot of people do. There's a subreddit called r slash my partner is trans, but it's not the most helpful for those of us who are struggling with not being attracted to our partner's genders and not being able to get past that immutable fact. But I pass on the info in case there is something helpful in it for you. Ultimately, this is a situation where no one is right and no one is wrong. There are no villains. Your spouse didn't intentionally mislead you, and you aren't intentionally rejecting their transness. But that doesn't make any of this easy. I still struggle with some lingering feelings of trauma, mostly around being able to trust my judgment of people. I was completely 100% blindsided by my partner's transition, and I can't shake the feeling that that's a failing on my part, that I should have known somehow, that I could have prepared myself. I couldn't have. I didn't do anything wrong, and neither did she. But it's something I struggle with anyway. You're not romantically attracted to males. 
That's all there is to it. Don't let this person try and manipulate you against your will. Tell him honestly that you support him being the person he truly is, but you need the same respect in return. That you aren't gay, aren't attracted to men at all, don't want to be married to a man, even platonically, and no amount of therapy is going to change that. Any more than therapy would be able to change him. That you accept him for who he is and how he wants to live his life, and need him to accept the same of you. Now for the next story. I, 26 male, recently found out that my fiance, 28 female, has hid her massive debt for me for our entire relationship. I'm thinking of calling off everything and leaving, but everyone around me says I'm overreacting. So, over the last 48 hours my life and relationship has basically gone off the deep end and I need some advice. I've been with my fiancé for a little over 3 years now. We met through friends and started dating soon after. I proposed at the beginning of the year and we were planning to try to get married this summer. Due to a certain worldwide event, we had to put that off though. Outside of the normal relationship trouble that most people have, our relationship has been great. I really felt like she was the one and I loved her. But, it turns out she's been lying to me about her financial situation. My fiancé has never been in a good situation financially. She never went to college and works as a server full time. This never was a problem for me. I went to trade school and make enough money to support both of us if needed. I have had to give her money before to help her when we were dating and this never bothered me. We ended up moving in together specifically to help her out in this area. This was never a problem for me, as I really don't care about money. However, this week I found out that she's been lying to me about how bad her financial situation actually was. When we moved in together my fiancé claimed she only had about 6000 worth of credit card debt. I gave her the money to pay that off when we moved in together so that it wouldn't be a problem in the future. Well, it turns out this was a lie. This week I found out that she has much more debt. Over 110,000. She did not tell me this. I found this out when a debt collector called me. It turns out when she moved in with me, she didn't inform any of her creditors that she moved. Even though I don't care about the money, this pissed me off to no end. I confronted her yesterday about this and she claims that she was so afraid she was going to lose me at the start of the relationship, so she decided to just not tell me about her massive debt, and was going to wait till after we were married. For three years she just decided to lie to me. I called off the marriage then and there, and packed a back and left for my parents' house. She's called me nearly 60 times since then, and I've ignored every one. When I told my parents about this, they said I am being immature and petty. According to them, this is not a big deal because everyone has debt nowadays, and if I love her, I need to understand how scared she was to tell me. I do love her, but she lied to me for three years about this. Along with this, the fact that she is so far in debt will become my problem if we married. Everyone I've talked to, say I need to look past this and go back home. But I honestly am thinking of just calling her and telling her I'm done and we're over. I feel like I need some advice here. Now for the top advice. I work in credit underwriting. 110k is a massive amount of credit card debt. She has likely been lying on credit applications to even have that amount of credit available to her. She will probably be declined for pretty much anything going forward. House loan, car loan, etc. That level of debt at her income level, is nearly impossible to pay off. If debt collectors are calling, that means she is already in default for at least one card. She will probably be forced to choose between filing bankruptcy, or facing a lawsuit. This is a very big deal, your parents are wrong. Flee from this situation because it's going to be around for probably the next 10 years as it is. Much longer if her spending addiction isn't addressed immediately. This is serious and a very big deal. First of all, she lied to you for years. Can you trust her about other matters? Second, this behavior could be ongoing and derail any plans you and her have, such as travel, kids, buying a house, helping your parents, or retiring. Not everyone has debt, and those who are financially literate and do, have student loans and or mortgages. You are making good money now, but what if you lose your job someday or get sick and don't work for several months? If you make the mistake of taking her back after her lying, consult a bankruptcy attorney. If you aren't married, you may be able to have her file for bankruptcy while she is single and wipe out lot slash most of this debt. Wait until your attorney says it's okay to marry, as those credit agencies might try to attach the forgiven debt to you. The bad news is that, a bankruptcy affects her for 7 years, so your joint credit won't be great, so you will have to assume everything will be in your name. Basically, whatever money she makes won't be counted for you to buy a house slash cars slash anything big for that 7 year period. 
Besides the lying, the biggest red flag is how did she spend that much money? Shopping and spending is an addiction like anything else, and some women, and men, spend money like gambling addicts as it fires off chemicals in their brains, dopamine etc, that the rest of us don't really get too worked up about. If you take her back, make her attend therapy for spending addiction and set a hard budget. Give her prepaid debit cards that only have a certain amount on them, and reconcile her spending every month. Make sure your credit cards are under lock and key, as her addiction might make her steal money and cards from you. I had a friend whose ex-wife did this, and stored all of her new items at her parents house in her old bedroom closet. He finally divorced her since she wouldn't stop spending more than they made. Next story is titled. My, male 26, girlfriend, female 24, is demanding unnecessary things after going to a sub that gives advice about female dating. I'm sure you all know what sub I'm talking about, but I won't say the name in case the feds pull up. My girlfriend and I lived together for 3 years and she only started acting like this recently. I would say that chore work is done 70-30, only because she goes back and cleans whatever I was supposed to because, I didn't do it right. Whoever suggested to go on the date meant that that person paid for both meals. I contribute to most of the household expenses and I'm the one who usually cooks. I'm not a very materialistic person, and I thought my girlfriend wasn't either. It really started around Christmas. She got me a PS5, that is the only thing I asked for. For weeks, she had been saying surprise me, which I did. I knew how costly the PS5 was, so I measured up to that price. Everything I got her was about the same price of the PS5. She seemed very bland with her reaction. She said thank you and went to go call my sister, who was also her best friend. I get a call from my sister a few hours later and learn that my girlfriend made it seem like I got her a blanket and a movie stub. I got her a personalized gifts basket full of skin care, gift cards, clothes, two pairs of shoes, books and art supplies. Bite me for not getting her a new car. Now she's saying that I always make her pay, she's the one who always wanted to go out, I like to stay in, I'm only cooking what I like, I never clean correctly and she expects me to pamper her all the time. I'm so freaking done with all of it. I mean the other day, she asked for a new phone, she has an XR that still functions amazingly and she has a job. I always make the big purchases, why can't she use her own money? If I move out, she'll lose the place because she doesn't make enough money to afford it. If she moves out, she'll probably go running out making me look like the bad guy. I forgot to add about today. I surprised her with breakfast in bed and chocolates, like I always did on Valentine's Day, I thought it was some kind of sweet tradition. She responds that she can't wait to see what else I planned. I didn't plan anything else. Point is, I needed to rant. She can't expect me to treat her like a queen when she's acting like a jerk 24-7. She used to be very cool, not so needy, and very fine with staying in and eating McDonald's while watching a movie, and not constantly focusing on the materialistic sides of things. Now she wants to go out to the fanciest of them all, and expects me to give her money all the time when she has her own. It's okay if we do that once in a blue moon, but I don't have the energy to do that all the time. I'm just so freaking done and her mood is constantly dragging my energy down. Now for the top advice. People who scorecard their relationships always ruin them. Unfortunately, this type of story is becoming common. Person with issues goes online, find some toxic community slash cult to fill their personality holes, and then tank their relationships become a pretty big problem to be honest. While I see you have a point about increased expectations you never signed up for, I feel like your whoever came up with the idea system of who pays for the date sucks, if your idea of a date is to never go anywhere or spend money. You should at least go half or take turns. Sounds like you guys are done. Seriously. Even as OP describes it, he doesn't come off very well. For your info, it isn't a surprise breakfast in bed when that's all you do. Sure, you don't have to buy everything for her, but making some effort is necessary. Having said that, did she plan anything for you? And which is it? Does she make plenty of money to buy things for herself, or is she not making enough to afford a place on her own? From the sounds of things, she might have a hard time getting a new place, but you might have a hard time finding a new girlfriend. Now she's saying that I always make her pay, she's the one who always wanted to go out, I like to stay in. Dates are so important to keep relationships new and exciting though. That being said, it sounds like both of you all are done with this relationship. Now for the final story. My, 26 male, fiancé, 26 female, resents me for making more. 
We started dating around six years ago, and at first, I couldn't believe that this amazing woman wanted to be with me. She was a student at one of the best colleges in the country and my life was a mess. I was just a dropout working a dead-end job. We'd been dating for a few months when she told me that if I didn't get my life together, she couldn't see a future with me, because relationships need more than just love to survive. That gave me the kick I needed to start making some changes. After that, I decided I wanted to go to college to study a subject which I'd had an interest in for some time. Between jobs to support us both and working on the prerequisites that I'd need to go to college, it took me a whole three years, but I spent that time learning skills that I knew I'd need for my degree to give me a bit of a boost. My fiancé graduated the same year I started college, and things were great. With her getting a well-paid job, I could devote all of my time to studying and working on projects. About a year into this, I was having a conversation with my dad and he's an experienced professional in an unrelated field, but he told me about a problem that I realized I could fix. Eventually I did create a solution and my dad used his connections to get me a meeting with a large company. To cut a long story short, they were so impressed with my solution that they gave me an absolutely ridiculous offer, and invited me to join the company in a very well-paid senior role straight after college. I graduated last year and things were going fantastically, up until I noticed my fiancé's mood changing. This went on for a while, before she finally told me how she was feeling. To summarize, she feels bad that she's worked hard her entire life in school, college and work, but despite that, after comparing our projected earnings, she was never going to make as much as me despite having three more years experience in her field, and going to a much better college than me. I understand why she'd feel undervalued given her reasons but I think she's actually blaming me for it and making me feel like this was an achievement that I don't deserve. Yeah that's it, I'm just trying to navigate whatever this is. Edit, so going through the comments there are a lot of people saying that I don't really deserve the job, so I thought I might elaborate. I didn't mention details earlier because I know what I'm about to say might make some people angry. The solution I designed automated a task that was previously done by a number of people, which is why they saw fit to pay me handsomely for it. They didn't hire me because of my potential, they hired me for the same reason a company hires anyone, to help their bottom line. I also wanted to point out the irony in people saying that I'm less deserving of my job because my dad got me a meeting. My fiancé is incredibly hard working. But the fact her parents were alumni of her college probably did help her application. I worked my butt off for six years, three years while completing prerequisites and three years in college, to gain the skills required to create the solution. I also wanted to emphasize this bit from above between jobs to support us both. I worked to support both of us while she was in college, so she wouldn't have to get a job or take on extra loans. The plan was always for us to switch after she graduated with her working and me studying. Now for the top advice. Jealousy is tough, it breeds resentment. And it seems that's where you currently are stalled. Either she has to get over herself, or this won't work. A healthy significant other would be beyond proud of you. That you had an opportunity and nailed it. Hard. I would be so proud of my spouse's success I would be bragging everywhere. Not because of any money, but how he solved the issue. Smart is so sexy. I brag about my higher earning wife all the time. I used to make more than her, but now she does better than me professionally, and couldn't be prouder. Yeah, my wife and I have always just looked at each other's earnings as our money. In the end, household income matters most. We have a saying, same pants, different pockets. It's all ours no matter who makes it. Seems like a more healthy way to approach a lot of marriage issues, not just money. Tell you what, gonna go a different route. Your partner doesn't resent you personally, at least not based on what I'm reading. There is likely something deeper here and I recommend couples counseling. Not deeper like she has an alien symbionts or something, but possibly some unresolved conflict from her childhood that creates this competition. The counseling will help ease that out of her, under the guise of the two of you creating a more meaningful and deeper relationship. Which honestly can't happen unless she deals with this. Let me put it this way. If you offer to quit your job and make less, would she agree to you doing that? I doubt it. Which means it's not about you, it's about her. On the surface it's jealousy, but there is likely some hurt under there fueling it, that was activated when this happened. You're gonna have to get to that if this is going to resolve. Best of luck to you. It's not about the grades you make, but the hands you shake. People who don't realize this are fools, who you know is vastly more important than what your qualifications are. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below. 
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.